So welcome to class, everyone. Um, I'm Melinda, your instructor. Before class starts and before every class, make sure that you set up your web conference. And you do this by clicking on the purple tab in the bottom lower right corner. Um, click on the My Settings icon, which is a little icon that looks like a gear. And click on Set Up Your Camera and Microphone. And then follow the prompts to make sure your microphone and video camera are working. Uh, to expand the chat panel, you click on the first icon, which looks like a balloon, and this is where you'll be able to type in uh, text. And ex to expand the attendees panel, you click on the second icon that looks like um, the people, and this is where you can see a list of attendees, and this is also where our breakup rooms will appear. So before we get started, just relax. I want you to enjoy class. Remember to turn off your phone and eliminate any distractions. Uh, we're going to start it with a quality check. Um, please raise your hand, which is the little person with this hand up icon in the bottom middle of the screen. Uh, please raise your hand if you can hear me OK. See the red recording light, and if you can see quality check. Great. And you can put your hands down. Thank you. So this is class three. It's February 15th, uh, 2019 for all of my listeners and virtual listeners. Again, I'm your instructor, Melinda Schneider. Uh, today we're going to be talking about chapter five, the community of inquiry from our book, Thinking Collaboratively, Learning in a Community of Inquiry by D. Randy Garrison. Our learning objectives today are after this web conference, students will be able to describe at least two characteristics of a community of inquiry, name the three interdependent elements of a community of inquiry, explain the goal of a community of inquiry, and list the three responsibilities of teaching presence. So let's start with what is a community of inquiry? And you can see this is abbreviated with a capital C, little O, and a capital I. So if you see that, that's community of inquiry. So I kind of came up with a short definition, um, learning community with open communication, group identity, and critical inquiry. Um, the book talks about it as a framework for collaborative and productive thinking and learning. And the concept first was introduced by two philosophers in the early 1900s, um, but didn't start to become popular until the 1980s. Um, community of Inquiry describes an effective educational practice that promotes collaborative learning. And it can be used for online or blended courses, but it also can be used face-to-face uh, -face classes and all types of learning environments. So there are three inter dependent elements of the community of inquiry. And you can see the, see how they come together um, in the picture. They are social, cognitive, and teaching presence. And these are collaborative and a productive method for thinking and learning. So when they all come together, you can see in the middle, uh, that's where you have an excellent educational experience with all these presences. So just a quick question. I'm going to have you uh, click on the chat and tell me uh, whether you believe the community of inquiry framework is an effective method to provoke corroboration and meaningful learning, and one reason why or why not you feel that way. You know, take up to a minute, but uh, there's a lot to the community of inquiry, and I just want to know kind of how you feel about it, if you think it's effective, and one reason why or why not. Uh, again, you can click on the first icon that looks like the balloon and type your response in the Say Something box. So Katie says yes. She thinks it's effective. Um, Candace also thinks it's effective. It provides a structured, check, structured checks and balances for group settings. Katie thinks it's very effective because it keeps the environment positive, supportive, and structured. And Annika says it can be effective if the instructor trainer fully understands the model and incorporate elements meaningful. And I totally agree with you, Annika, because there's so much to it. It seems a little complicated and complex. Um, for an instructor to fully implement it, to me, would take a lot of effort, although I do think it is effective also. 
So we're just going to talk about the three different elements. Um, the first one is social presence. And this is participants identify way that, why they are part of the group and its purpose. And it's to establish an environment that promotes open communication. Um, when people feel like they are part of a group and supported in the group, it encourages open communication. And this cre creates an environment where people can think and learn collaboratively. The next element is cognitive, pres cognitive presence. Sorry, This creates meaning through continual communication, and it also integrates existing knowledge with new learning. This involves tapping into a student's prior knowledge to create new meaning, and this also encourages reflection, discussion, and collaborative discourse. And the last element is teaching presence. This is preparation hands-on teaching and leadership of a course. Those are the three responsibilities uh, for the teacher. Also, to set clear expectations and provide guidance. Um, a teacher's presence can make or break a course even before the course starts when they're just developing the content. So according to the author, um, those three components are imperative to have a successful course. Uh, they're all meaningful um, for us to have meaningful learning. Sorry about that. They're also important for instructors to set clear expectations and provide guidance. And all of these go into having a successful teaching presence. So a uh, quick question, what makes you feel connected when you're in a class um, of those three types of presences? What makes you feel the most connected to a course? Is it being um, able to reflect, discuss, and tap into your prior knowledge, which is cognitive presence, the guidance and interactive with the instructor, which is the teaching presence, or is it open communication and collaboration with your classmates? And if you can click on the uh, square icon in the upper left of the corner, choose the, um, then you'll choose the ellipsis and you can just drag it around your choice. So we have one vote for social presence. So they like the collaboration with, with classmates. And two people like being able to reflect and tap into their prior knowledge. So I agree with all that. I also agree that for me, the teacher can make or break a class. Um, and they can make all the difference on whether I actually enjoy the class or sometimes if I even learn. It's okay, Annika. <laughs> so we're going to do a, a quick case study. Um, and what we're going to do is try to find some tools or applications that can be used to ensure social presence, collaboration, and open communication in a course. And this could be online or otherwise. Um, we'll take three minutes to do this. You can either do a quick internet search or you might know some tools or applications from prior experience. Um, I'm going to have you list two or three tools and I have a table set up for you. List what they are, whether they are free, if you know, or how much they cost and how they could be used. So one example I have is, you know, Facebook. You can use Facebook. It's free. You can set up private groups to communicate with your class. So to get to the groups, once I set them up, um, you'll click on the arrows next to the name of the group. To come back to the main room, you'll click on the arrow next to that. I'm going to create a Google slide link um, that I'll put in the chat box, and you'll click on that. That'll make a tab at the top of your screen and when you go into your group you'll click on that tab so that you can type right on the, the Google slide. And like I said we'll have three minutes to do this. Um, raise your hand if you need help and I can come to the group or um, see how I can help you. So give me a minute here and let me set up our groups. So I'm going to have you all go into group one since we just have a, a small group today. Let me put the link into chat box.
There we go. So you'll click on the link, um, go into your group, which will be group one, and I'm going to set the timer for three minutes.
so sorry about that, that you couldn't edit it. Um, you still said you came up with some ideas. Does someone want to jump on the mic and talk about what you talked about? Oh, thanks. <laughs> sure, we'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe that's why Candace had her mic on. Um, okay, so we kind of talked about um, different things like you have Google, not just Google Docs, but um, kind of the Google suite of different things, and that's free for, I think, everybody. I mean, you may get into a couple things that are higher end um, <laughs> uh, that might be more expensive, but as a, as a rule, Google's going to be free for anybody, and you can use all sorts of different um, tools on there just to collaborate. Microsoft has a lot of those same things. Um, I believe Microsoft owns Skype now, but they also have things like SharePoint and um, something called Teams, and those are all different collaborative softwares. I don't know. I mean, there's an initial fee for that. I don't necessarily know if it's always a subscription or not, um, but that kind of depends on whatever you're using or if you're part of an institution, that varies. And then finally, we talked about different LMSs. Um, you have things like Pilot, like we use. You have Blackboard. You have Moodle. Um, there's Canvas. You have different LMS programs. And while those are usually don't cost the user themselves anything, um, usually those are through an institution, and the institution will have some kind of fee. So that's kind of what we talked about. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I came up with um, OneNote, Google Docs, um, Skype. Those are some of the things that we use at work to communicate just even within our office. Um, there's also something else called Microsoft Teams. So there's a lot of different things that you can use to collaborate in courses. So let's get back to our slides. So today we've talked about uh, the community of inquiry, about the three interconnected elements, uh, social, cognitive, and teaching presence, how each element is important to ensure collaboration and meaningful learning. And we also talked about some tools and application that can be used to collaborate and facilitate group work and interaction in courses. Uh, we'll have a quiz and pilot under the assessments tab and the quiz is named chapter five. It's due tomorrow, February 16th, 2019 by midnight. So reminders, our next class is next Friday, February 22nd from five to seven and make sure you complete your quiz before tomorrow at midnight. Uh, does anybody have any questions? If not, if you have questions, you can submit them to me in Pilot under the Communications tab under Discussions or under the Communications tab and just send me an email. Hope everyone enjoyed class and have a great night.